Joe would come out and erase that first meeting and set his own meeting, and therefore he was totally dominate the other guy. And most experts believe that's what's likely to happen because Tua has enthralled many already with his knockout punching power. Well, they're in the ring, and there's a good look at David Izorite of Nigeria. Was unbeaten until nine months ago when he lost his most recent bout. So you see the record is now 18 and 1, 16 KOs. He has huge hands, incidentally, which indicate the chance for increasing punching power as he goes along in his career. As we told you, he lost the last one, though, on March 15, beaten by Maurice Harris in an eight-round decision. Much tougher opponent tonight, as we take a look at the young man who was born and raised part of his life in Samoa, ultimately moved to New Zealand, went to the Olympics in 1992, more or less by himself to represent New Zealand, and made it all the way to the semifinal there before losing to his Rete. As you can see, 21 KOs in 25 fights. And those 11 first-round knockouts already into his career stand him in pretty good stead when you compare him to some of the greatest punchers in the history of the division. Only Mike Tyson, in his first 25 fights as a professional, notched more first-round KOs than Tua. You see him there on the list ahead of Marciano Foreman, Dempsey, and Fraser. And Tua comes in here with three consecutive first-round knockouts. Tail of the tape between David Tua and David Izonrete. And Izonrete has a big advantage in reach, 11 inches there over Tua, so that makes it obvious that Tua must get inside Izanrate's jab in order to make his power the effective difference in the fight. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The David Tua, David Izanrate fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. He can be saved by the bell only in the 12th and final round, and only the referee can stop the fight. Jim. Brilliant pronunciation of the Nigerian name by a man who only yesterday was still saying Eisenritty. Good job, Harold. Let's go up to ring announcer Mark Biro. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mohegan Sun Casino on the Mohegan Reservation and the home of the Mohegan Indians for an evening of HBO Boxing After Dark. Under the promotion of Cedric Kushner Promotions, in association with Main Events Incorporated and Budweiser, this Bud's for you. Your matchmaker is Bill Benton. Tonight's bouts are under the auspices of the Mohegan Tribal Council, Chairman Roland Harris, and the Connecticut State Athletic Commission, from the Department of Consumer Protection, Commissioner Mark Sheffrin. The attending executive director is gentleman John Burns. Ring officials assigned by the Mohegan Tribal Council and the Connecticut State Athletic Commission. Your ringside physicians are Dr. Michael Schwartz and Dr. Joseph Carpenteri. Your timekeeper this evening is the lovable Ludell. Counting for the knockdowns at the bell, Matt Mullaney. This contest is scheduled for 12 rounds for the WBC International Heavyweight Championship. Your ring officials assigned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, and the supervisor is Aníbal Miramontes. Your judges at ringside are from Hartford, Connecticut, William Hutt, from Brick, New Jersey, Tom Kazmarek, and from New Salem, New York, Fred Uchi, your referee for this event from Braintree, Massachusetts, Richard Flaherty. Introducing now the principals first in the red corner to my left, wearing the white trunks with blue accessories. He weighs in at 224 pounds, his professional record, 18 victories, one defeat. He has 16 wins by way of knockout. He hails from Lagos, Nigeria, and now makes his home in Paris, France. Here is the challenger, David Aizon, Aizon Wrighty. Aizon Wrighty. His opponent in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, white accessories, he weighs 223 pounds. He is undefeated in 25 professional bouts. He has 21 wins by way of knockout. He hails from South Auckland, New Zealand. Here is the WBC International Heavyweight Champion, David. WBC 
International Heavyweight Championship. What a title. Okay, gentlemen, you had your instructions in the dressing room. I just want to remind you, I don't want any fouls at all, okay? Good, clean, professional fight. You're both experienced men. Twelve rounds, we come out boxing in each round. Good luck. We've said a lot of nice things about David Tua, but as you all know, in the heavyweight division especially, one shot in the head changes all perceptions. Zorate comes from Lagos, Nigeria. He said that his tribe is the Izon tribe. Family name is Rite, thus the name Izon Rite. Speaks French and lives most of the time now in Paris. Starts to get the jab working, but he seems to loop that jab just a little bit. The one thing he'll have to do here is be prepared to go for a little while. In amateur boxing, three rounds and it's all over. Tonight, two will be in his face for a great deal of time. If you haven't seen David Tua before, you noted the physical dimensions, reminiscent of Mike Tyson. So too is the style, quite reminiscent of the early Mike Tyson. In fact, in fact, Tua worked out with Evander Holyfield before his fight with Tyson, and he played the role of Mike Tyson. Much to Evander's benefit once he got into the ring. And Tua jives in with the left hook and immediately tries to pin Izarate against the ropes and go to work with power punches. Izarate is too straight up to beat a guy like David Tua. To a jab to his body, Zarate keeps his hands low. Zarate landed a short counter right inside. Tua seemed unflustered by it. Zarate normally keeps his right hand pinned against his cheek as a defensive mechanism. Said that he would try to mix it up and be a little freer flowing with his punches tonight, and he's doing that so far. Tua goes to the body and comes back upstairs with the left hook. Zarate seems to be looking for air now, but he is landing a good right hand over the top of Tua's left hand. Tua has shown some pretty nice head movement walking in, Roy, but he is catching a few solid shots. Once he punches, he leaves his left hand down, and he doesn't move his head after he throws his left hand. Now, that's a good point, Roy. He does move his head as he's coming in, but when he throws the punch, he likes to admire his work, as many great young power punchers do. There was a good right hand by Zarante. by Zanrate. Tua steps through it, comes back inside, throws an uppercut. The reason this fight probably is so hard for Tua is because this is a tall, stand steel boxer. And the first round knockout streak comes to an end as Tua begins stepping up in class. Zanrate, a better so opponent so than other recent entries. Yeah. So so Hold it up body first. He's stuck to that hook. Body, body, body. Then come over top of the hook right here. Okay? Left you too far away from this guy. Don't get this guy scared as shit. Don't get brave. Don't let this guy get brave on you. You understand me? You get out there and let this guy know he's going to be in a damn fight. You understand me? Come on, you're waiting too long. Get out on top of this guy. Go. I want fast punches, okay? Now, this is my round, right? Now, come on. I get my round, right? Now, let me see you pick fast up the pace. Fast Now, pick up the pace with this guy. This guy can't hang with you. Make this guy fight now, all right? This guy has nothing. Got it. Now, got look. It. Drop down with that right hand. Yeah. Okay? The right hand is coming yeah. to drop down. Va revenir vite. Avec la gauche, fais ton saut. Alors, un gauche et puis reviens tout de suite, hein? Okay. Tu peux gagner, David. Baisse ta tête. Tu ne laisses pas voir avec le crochet gauche. Well, if you speak French, you know what instructions David Izorite was getting. We anticipate getting an interpreter there to help us with French instructions in Izorite's corner. He lands a short right hand inside to begin round two. 
what I was about to say at the end of the round was that Izarte is a tall guy who is a slugger. This is very difficult for a short guy that is a slugger. Because? Because when you're tall and a slugger, you have the reach. So if he gets to hit Tua before Tua can ever land any punches. So what's the best way for Tua to get inside of Izarte's stuff? The thing is, is who is the better inside fighter? Izarte is going to win the fight right on the outside, right there. See, that's where he's landing the good right hand at, because he's just enough, just far enough away to where he can hit Tua, but Tua can't hit him. When Tua gets inside, he still is a good inside fighter, and he lands there, too. So Izarte is actually better suited for this style right now. Tua would have to, I guess, stay way out and go way in. Zanrate has crashed a couple of good right crosses off of Tua's head here in the second round. He has a very quick little right hand, Jim, and he's been able, just like that, and he's giving Tua some problems with it. Tua should also beat his body a little bit. Right hand inside by Tua. Still trying to solve the technical challenge of getting inside David Izarate's longer punches. The body shots will do more damage for Tua than anything else right now. But he's been a little bit of a headhunter here in the second round and has not remembered to go to the body as much here as he did in round one. And I believe Izarate is starting to fade just a little. Izarate starting to fall a little bit with the jab. Tua decides to counter over it with the right hand. The took lands. Uppercut landed for Tua. Tua is throwing a very good left uppercut. If Galana had that punch, he might have finished Riddick both. I don't know. It's according to where he landed it at. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Ron. Well. Body shot by Tua. Tua taking his time and trying to pick his inside shots against Izanrate. Izanrate, not nearly as formidable in the last minute of this round as he was in the first. If Tua just hits his body a little bit more, then he'll have him about ready to go in a couple of rounds. Zanrate starting to miss. Tua starting to land more frequently. Good round of heavyweight action. Souffle bien. Bien. Où tu travailles plus vite avec sa droite là. OK? Tu travailles plus vite avec sa droite. We are asking David and Zanrate to work more with more speed with the right hand. Louis Sakarias is telling him that with the hands very high, he cannot get hurt by David Tuar. You have to work with the jab, just the jab, and you have to be mean when you send the jab. Just the jab and just Natalie, no last name necessary. There was one other important instruction in there, which is they want him to hold his right hand high. They want to take the left hook away from Tua if they can. It comes from your French? <laughs> I won't say where it came from. That's Jim. rather spectacular, Larry, if that came from your French lexicon. They don't pay me to do that. <laughs> Hiding your light under a bushel. No, notice where his right hand is. They want it to keep it up high. He can't keep it too high because when he's that close, he has to watch for that left uppercut right there. Yep. As round three begins. Oh, Tua has good the working forward. distance between himself and Desandrete, and that is entirely to David Tua's advantage. Yes, because his arms are definitely the shorter. I am very impressed with this left uppercut that David Tour is throwing. Now Isanrate bangs out some space by going to Tua's body and coming back upstairs. 
He's breathing very hard, as I tell you, though, Jim. Perhaps he remembers that that body punch is the one that helped him beat Tua in the Olympics. Warren Moore, Tua is starting to find the openings in Izanrate's guard. Izanrate is going to have to find a way to slow Tua down, and I think the body punching would be the way to do it. Yeah, because he is somewhat of a head hunter himself. Oh, good shot by Izarate. Excellent combination by Izarate. Who looks right now like the best opponent that Tua has faced so far in his career. There's a good left hook inside by David Tua. The only thing about him, I think, is that he fights the same type of fight that David Tua fights. Doesn't use the right, doesn't use his reach advantage, Roy, right? No, he doesn't at all. Tua threw that left uppercut from far away. Now he steps in closer. There's a danger in throwing the uppercut from far away. Just ask Buster Douglas, who wound up on his back against Evander Holyfield for making that mistake. Both of these guys take very good punches. Oh, good shot by Tua. That's the type of punch that it takes to get a guy out of here. Tua digging to the body with the left hook. Comes back to the left and right upstairs, both partially blocked by Izanrate. Izanrate trying to jab his way out of the corner, and now he lands. Whoa. <laughs> Ouch. Congratulations, David. You make a good, uh, good round. We are good, David. If you follow boxing like this, you are going to win that fight, David. You still have to put your hand up because it's still dangerous. David, dès que tu as bloqué, dès que tu as bloqué, envoie-moi cet uppercut. Uppercut, crochet, vais vite. As soon as you can, you put, mais les droites, il faut que tu les donnes pour tuer. Pour tuer, pas pour t'amuser. T'as compris? Mais en attendant, tu donnes ton direct du gauche qui fait mal, hein? Il fait mal et tu prépares ça. Watch, David, too. Is trying to deal with that high right hand that protects the right side of he's on Rete's head by coming up with his uppercut. You know, Lou Duva wanted a tougher fight for Tua than he's had recently. I'm not sure he wanted one this tough. <laughs> well, it's great action so far. To give you a numerical indicator according to punch stat numbers, the average heavyweight throws 45 or 50 punches in a round. In round three, Tua threw 81. Izarate threw 85, so they're working awfully hard for heavyweights. Very hard. And the one thing Lou probably wants to do is to build his confidence by letting him beat the guy who he lost to in the Olympics. This is a big confidence, confidence builder for Tua. Then he'll probably send him after a heavyweight title. A world heavyweight title. Of which there are several. At least. They fire away in close quarters. And again, Tua has Izarate pinned against the ropes. And again, Izarate uses the left hand to try to get himself out. He's throwing that quick right hand less and less. And that has to do with David Tua's left hook. That's right. Because he has to keep that right hand home now to try to stop the left hook and the left body shot. One thing that Tua can do that Izarate can't do is put punches together in combination type form. Which means throw one or two, sometimes three, four, and five, all good five punches. There's the right hand as Isarate comes back away with it a couple times. Isarate's got a little counter punching ability when he's willing to go ahead and cut loose. There's that uppercut again, and Tua is looking for the uppercut to turn out the lights. Tua throws a deadly uppercut. Another Tyson reminder. Missing and reaching with the right hand uppercut. He's about to go uppercut crazy, but that was a good reason to do it. The left uppercut.
seemed momentarily to stun Isan Rete. And Izarate doesn't move. In fact, his legs are starting to get a little weak. This would be a good time for Tua to go back to the body. He's done some head hunting for about a minute here with that uppercut. Obviously, he's thinking finish, but you got to go back to the body to do it. Yeah, he does have to go to this guy's body to weaken him. Oh, that hard right hand by Zumrate. Misses the second one. Unexpected rally there for the Nigerian. Tua was thinking that Isanrate didn't have that left in it. And there's a good quick left and a right hand as Isanrate rallies in the last 30 seconds of the round. Now two good body shots by Tua. Two young men going at it. Izan Retray's management thinks he's not he's not mean enough. He's too nice. Looks mean enough to me. Right here. That was a mean right hand. Hey, the Benjamin. Listen to me. You understand me? Go, baby. Dave, you got to get down low and punch. Come on, now get down. Uh, come on. On your back. Keep your hands up here like that. On your back. Let go. David, let go. Don't go for yourself, boy. Unbelievably enough, they threw 166 between punches between them in round three. They threw 166 punches between them in round four. Harold Letterman, how do you score the fight after four rounds? Larry, three rounds to one, 39-37, David Tua. I think the biggest problem David Izanrate has is that he's fighting David Tua's fight. And when you fight with your back on the ropes, it's very, very hard to get off a good, solid power shot. Tua, the other has got real good leverage coming forward. And, and Izanrate can't seem to get real good power because his back is laid on that rope. I have the fight two rounds to one and one even for Tua. Tua is getting hit with too many straight right hands right now. This is something that he needs to make an adjustment on in this fight. He doesn't need to wait to go back to the gym. He needs to get his left hand up some now. What made Mike Tyson so effective when he was young is how he was able to get to his opponent aggressively and still not get hit a lot of punches because of how quick he was because of his head and shoulder movement. The two things that Tua is doing is he has that left hand so low and he doesn't move his head right after he finishes his punches. He was starting to throw bombs with the right hand in this round. Most of the damage up to now has been done with the left. In this round, he's landed two big right hands over the top. But he's still getting hit with that same right hand by Izarate. Well, I think Izarate can land that quick right hand whenever he's willing to throw it. There it is again, right after Tua punches. Every time Tua stops, he gets hit. He has to move his head after he punches. And by now, surely, as you said in the opening on camera, Roy Jones, whatever happened in Barcelona four years ago is no longer a factor because they've got a whole new history to deal with now. That's right. You saw the referee warning the corner of these on retray to uh, get down. Vicious right hand shot by David Tua as he loaded up and landed it to the chest. I don't think David Tua will ever see another guy who can take his punch as well as his all to you. That's saying quite a lot. Tua's some puncher. Yep. As you can see. Uh, what was a smart thing for him to do then was when he made his arm to miss the big two punches, that takes a lot out of you. So he immediately rushed and went to his arm body. That was smart. 
who it tries to finish every round with a flurry, but here, time runs out on it. Still to come tonight, 12 round lightweight championship fight between Philip Holliday of South Africa on the left and Ivan Robinson of Delran, New Jersey, originally from Philadelphia, on the right of your screen there. Robinson has been working in a bread factory part-time and has learned how to bake. Let's see if he can bake Holiday's star status in the lightweight division. You gotta go over here. Give me the mouthpiece. Sure. Steve, you're waiting too fucking long out there. You gotta throw combinations. What are you waiting for? Come on, man. You gotta go three, four, five punches with this fucking Every guy. time you throw combinations, you can't miss the guy. Understand? But you gotta get your punches off. You throw the right hand, double the hook up for me, and let's go home. There. Dave, come on, now let's go. Huh? Are you here? Let me see go long. You can see a scrape on the side of Tua's right eye. Does it appear to be dangerous? Well, this will be an interesting fight to score, and if it winds up on the scorecards, I don't know. All bets are off because Izarate is throwing more jabs. He clearly has an advantage when they stand at distance in the middle of the ring. And he's not doing too badly off the ropes, although Tua is able to pressure him into the ropes and maintain the aggression most of the time. Tua also has a little scrape in the corner of his depth eye from that right hand. Oh, right there, up his arm tape. Zonrate's got a chance as we get to the latter stages of the fight. Round six, scheduled ten. We heard Ronnie Shields in Tua's corner saying, throw the right hand, double up with the left hook, and let's go home. I don't think it's going to be that easy. I don't think so either because he's depending on the fact that his team hopefully will only expect one left hook and the second one will catch him by surprise. And if that does happen, then we probably would be able to go home. The surprise punches are the most dangerous. Just to continue the Tyson comparison, of course, you'll recall that in his three championship stages, Tyson himself had to go the distance with some fighters like James Quick Tillis and Mitch Blood Green, who were able to nullify his left hook with their size in the jab. Yeah, but he wasn't catching right hands like this on his chin at the same time. So Tua showing some chinks in the armor here tonight. Oh, good left hook by Tua. Here's the bread and butter. Let me tell you something else, Jim. When you hit a guy with your best punches this much and it doesn't even stagger him, it can be a confidence taker. Well, if you see Tua looking at Izarate as if to say, what are you still doing here? And Izarate replies with the right hand. As though to say, I'm not only here, what are you doing here? <laughs> We're going to learn something about David Tua's patience, ring generalship, and ability to maintain composure down the stretch in this fight. That was a good try. By David Tua. Oh, to good body. shot by Tua. To the body. Tried by Zarate. Zarate's arms are protecting him a lot too. Well, this is a challenge that Tua is going to face over and over throughout his career. How to deal with bigger, taller fighters, have a reach advantage, and we're not afraid of it. Yeah, Jim, but not many of them are going to be able to take this kind of punishment and issue it back out. C'est bien David, c'est bien David, c'est bien David, c'est toi le plus fort, t'as compris Il est cuit, il est contre toi. C'est toi le champion, c'est bien. David, you are stronger tonight, you are the best one, you have to follow like this, you are going to win. Souffle bien, souffle encore. Allez, tu m'as compris, on est en train de gagner là, tu m'as compris ce que je te dis. Souffle bien. Il est mort, il est mort, hein. David Tua having problems sometimes getting in close, leads with a left hook, but he hasn't seriously even stunned He's on Rete so far. Come on, you got to go on this guy. Come on, this guy's tired as hell. Come on. You're not even touching with the body. You strong? You're not even strong. But get out. You're fighting now. You're strong now. Come on. Touch. Touch. 
Duva and Ronnie Shields are not that terribly happy with Tua's performance. I think they're just trying to motivate him. I think so, too, but they also don't like the fact that he's getting caught with the same punch over and over again, I'm sure. They'll be working on that in the gym. First thing they have to do is hope they get back to the gym. It's not to expect a guy hit you with the same punch over and over again. Because that punch gets harder and it starts to weaken you more and it wears on that spot. Well, Isner Otey has been landing the jab too. And he's begun to assert himself a little bit more with the jab in the last couple of rounds as he's doing right there. He throws more jabs than Tua throws left hooks and right crosses. And that could catch the eye of the judges as the fight goes on. Yeah, it could. That hurts his left hook. That hurt is on Rete, no question. I think the uppercut about three rounds ago, and then maybe that punch with the two that have done the most damage. Yeah, but he's been hit 15 punches to that one he landed so far. Make that two. Zante <laughs> <laughs> needs to pick that right hand back up again. You talk in the sport about a guy having a good beard. Isanrate has a pretty good beard, and he's shown it here tonight. A fantastic beard. You know what Duba wanted to to do, guys, was to pound on his arms and his shoulders and everywhere and tie him down and tire him that way. If he can take that. Well, I think you're right, Roy. Fantastic beard. That was some <laughs> shot right there. Yeah, this is a Ray Mercer kind of beard. <laughs> we were getting a little wild here, but he's landing a lot of this stuff, too. Yeah, but this takes a lot out of you, too, Jim. You have to be very careful not to wear the stuff out here. And he's not throwing combinations, and he's not going to the body, and he's going to get another dressing down from Ronnie Shields between rounds. And, and he's getting hit every time he lands the punch. Sometimes two to one. Like that. Like that. Like that. Every time he lands one, he gets caught. Well, you talk about home run swings. This is the classic case of a guy who's going home run crazy in here. And he might cost himself the fight. I don't know. He's doing a lot of damage, though. One fighter or the other needs to go to the body right now. The big punches make you very tired. Somebody should go to somebody's body. Oh, no. Oh, no, it didn't hurt me at all. That last punch might have won him the round. I was just about to give that round to Zandrate. You have to breathe, David. You don't have to go down now. You know, you are, you are winning. You are not tired, David. You have to follow. The head has to follow. He's going to go down, David. He's ready. Just play this fucking dead. You understand? This guy can't fucking stand up. You throw three, four hooks at him. This guy's ready to go. You gotta throw a big close, three front, but bait yourself down. Don't stand up straight. Right at the very end of the round, the punch that could have been scored a knockdown had it occurred a few seconds later. Yep, the guy was off balance. It wasn't a clean punch. It landed basically behind his head, and he was off balance. But the rope saved him from going down, and that can be called a knockdown. All right, let me correct a piece of misinformation I gave you earlier, and it could be critical. In the early rounds, I said this was 10 rounds. No, scheduled for 12. More and more these days, you find occasions where some pretext has been found to schedule a non-title fight for 12 rounds, and this is one up. To a jab to the body to make his Arte reach down to block the jab, then he face down and comes to the left hook, which has been very effective for Tua tonight. That's a Roy Jones technique. One of a, one of a million. <laughs> he said modestly. <laughs> Well, as round eight 
proceeds. You're looking at this round plus four more after this one. And that makes it quite a war of attrition if it's going to go the distance because they've thrown an awful lot of punches already. Uh, and they both look a little fatigued. And there goes Izanrate taking Roy Jones's advice to go to the body, but only with one punch. Which is definitely not enough. Now, I agree with Larry. I think Tua looks real tired right now. Because he exerted himself a lot in that last round, Jim. Yeah, he was trying so many home run shots. And as you pointed out, boy, that takes a lot out of him. Right hand lands for Tua. This guy's RT is tough as nails. Very tough. Zanrate is starting to feel these left hooks more than before. But he constantly fights back, Jim. What's that? He constantly comes back and retaliates. Yep. Oh, yeah, and he came back to the body that time. It shows that he still has his wits about him. A couple of very strong heavyweights. At least two is trying to do it his corner stand. He did throw the double left hook there. But there he goes again, getting caught with the right hand right after he punched it. He's on Rete, not sticking the jab as much in this round. And it had helped him to build momentum in recent rounds. He would try to oh. chop that tree down with the left hook. There's the body shot I'm talking about. Combinations to the body, I think, would do it for Tua if he can find the energy and the resourcefulness to throw them. There were the type of body shots that I was speaking of earlier. There. He's dead out there. If you're getting off some body punches that come up on top, but measure them on the same measure. Them. Don't wait. You gotta get three, four punch combinations. Keep in the water. You got that, Dave? Dave, you got that? Now, come on, you're picking it up. You're down now. All right, baby. Look. Dave, if you give me a good five punch combination, I'm telling you, I guarantee you. His honor looked at the end of that round like he was ready to fall down someplace. And hear the reason for it. A triple left hook. Wow. He took back there. Wow. On va y aller, David. Allez, tu te réveilles maintenant, hein? OK, tu te réveilles maintenant. Tu écoutes ce qu'il t'a dit? Hein? C'est ta dernière chance, là. Mets le chaos, hein? Je suis. Allez, tu y vas maintenant, hein? Viens avec du gauche et puis tu balances à droite. No matter what language comes from the corner, there's always a little lying that comes <laughs> to the fighter when he's gone through a round like that. Punch count dropping now as both fighters begin to tire. In the middle rounds, they were throwing more than 80 punches of each per round. In that round, Tua only threw 47. Izanrate threw 63. And Izanrate saw his punch count drop because he quit throwing the jab. Only 20 of them in that round. Harold Letterman, how do you score it now through eight rounds? Larry, six rounds to two, 78-74, David Tua. I thought he had a big eighth round. He really hurt David. He's on retake. I think he's on retake. Still should get off those ropes, move a little, take him into the center of the ring and try and hurt him. I definitely think David Tua is ahead of the fight, but I don't know if he has it by that much. He's on to has been counting everything that Tua has done, and I just can't say he's that far behind in this fight. I have it five, two, and one. But this, this is no walk in the park. Or on the Indian reservation. Oh, this is a good, tough <laughs> battle. Tremendous learning experience for both fighters, both of whom appear to have possible big futures in the division, or at least operable futures. Looks like two big buffalo meeting on the terrace. Yep. <laughs> Or, of course, in his Zonrate's case, since he's from Nigeria, water buffalo. <laughs> a buffalo and a water buffalo. Hard right hand by Tua. And still the punch count is dropping, particularly in Tua's case, as he tries to load up one big shot. I like the body work Tua is putting in, though. Tua comes 
back with a right and a left. But he's out there block both of those punches. Yep. He doesn't get a credit for blocking a great deal of the punches that he is. He is blocking a great number of these punches. Back on top. Cut lands for Tua, snaps his on Tay's head back. Tua slips some punches inside and tries to go back to the body. I definitely think Tua has what it takes to become a heavyweight champion. No doubt. Why do you say that now, Roy? Because he's taking everything he's coming at him. This guy won't go down. A puncher usually gives in when a guy won't go down to his big punches. Tua's not letting up. He's constantly trying. He has everything that it takes to be a champion. There you see Tua again at work. You'll see his uppercut and how he tries to penetrate the defense. And there was another two for one. Boy, it's great to be young and strong. <laughs> if you're in this game. Allez, David. David, ne te laisse pas ne, ne, ne te laisse pas pousser. David, you have to go ahead. You don't have to go. C'est toi qui dois aller maintenant. Down. You have to go ahead still. Ne recule plus au milieu du Tomorrow you will cry if you. Allez, maintenant c'est toi David. T'as trop honte de faire la différence de ta both of these young fighters are entering a country they've never been to before. <laughs> After nine tough rounds, looking ahead to three more. So-called championship rounds. Tua lands a hard right hand to the body. In round nine, the most significant punch stat event was the shortening of his Zonrate's jab. He landed only four of the 26 jabs he threw in that round, and he's getting more and more reticent to extend the jab as Tua keeps loading up power shots. And that left hook on Tua has put him some swelling under the, the right eye of his Zonrate. Uh, he's got some a serious wealth there. One thing that is coming into play for David Tua right now is the work that he has put in with the Vander Holyfield and Andrew Bellotto. You learn a lot from veteran fighters like them, and that, was, that is what gets you over some humps like these that he's in now. Tua said he gained enormous confidence from sparring with Holyfield. It meant something to him to learn that he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best in the world and hold his own on a daily basis. And that was a big-time combination by Tua. But here again is Dante answers back. He's Every time. He has great guts. Every time he answers right back. There is no quit in David Izanrete. And I'm also impressed with David Tua's condition. No fat headways with this type of condition to throw these big punches like this. Last week in the Galata Bow fight when they exploded with all those bombs, both of them seemed dead tired. Tua still seems like a fresh strong fighter here. Wild right hand there by Tua. Hard right hand by Zanrate. Didn't bother Tua much. He comes back with a right-hand shot of his own. But David Tua has not been able to get combinations to the body in this round because David Isorite is guarding his rib cage very carefully. Yeah, and plus he has to look out for that right hand every time he punches low. Tua does. Heavy swelling under the right eye of Isorite. But there, he got caught with the left hook and he answered with the right hand. Every time he's caught, he comes back and answers. Zonrate slipping slightly. Tua's right hand was blocked, and Zonrate got to Tua's belly with the left hand. Yeah, he's been doing a little bit more body work this round. He must have remembered a little bit from that last, from the amateur fight. Oh, that was a right hand that hurt David Tua. But there it is, after his combination, he gets caught, like you said, Jeff, admiring his work. Now he's hurt, though. The first time we've seen him back up in the fight tonight. Listen, he's got to stay up, Nick. Okay, okay, okay. 
Tu même pas vu, tu l'as mis KO. Idiot. Allez, mets-toi là, assieds-toi. David, you need to make him KO. You didn't see. Au milieu du ring, tu vas le mettre KO. You have to go on the middle of the ring. He was, he was KO. Eh ben voilà, Michel, il me dit, il était KO. Tu même pas vu. Michel told you it was. Souffle bien. Mets lui de l'eau sur la tête. Mets lui de l'eau. Mets lui de l'eau. Mets lui de l'eau ici. Au milieu du ring, tu vas gagner. Mets lui de l'eau dans les couilles. Il a touché, il a mal, il est trop plus vite. David, tu vas gagner, David. Fierce combination by Tua. Six punch combination. About three or four of them landed cleanly. There you saw late in the round another big left hand. But I see the African Frenchman landing a lot of punches. And I have this fight getting closer and closer. Between rounds, Izarate made it very tough for his cut man, Mick Birmingham, to get the inswell under that right eye. He was moving his head too much. Fighters have to be disciplined to hold their heads still between rounds so the cut man can do their work, and Izarate wasn't doing it. Well, he's probably never been cut before or banged up like this. I don't think he's cut, but that weapon is there. Uh, he's not cut yet. But if Duke could get to that right eye with the left hook about four or five more times, he'll be cut. That was a good shot by David Tour. He tried to counter the jab with an overhand right. Still thinking in there. We like to see this late in a fight with a young fighter like David Tour. So even though he may get lower marks for failing to produce the early knockout, you see this as a great growing experience for Tua, Roy. I see this as a terrific growing experience for Tua. Yeah, unless he loses the fight. <laughs> I don't think he'll necessarily lose the fight because he's forced the fight. He's added the heavier punches. And I think the referee, I mean, the judges are, are seeing this. So I don't think he will lose this fight. Especially if you keep throwing those type of body shots. But he doesn't need another like this for some time. They might look for some one-round knockouts for him after this fight. You don't want to put a young heavyweight through this kind of mill too often. I wouldn't want to put a hole through this. All right hand by Sandrate. Tua comes back with a combination, most of it blocked by Zandrate, but again the Nigerian begins to show some fatigue midway through the 11th. There's a good right hand by David Tua, and now Zandrate isn't so quick to answer back. He must be getting tired. One thing about Tua, every power punch is a real power punch. He's not trying to just tap this man in there. I think he's just about, I think he's just about having the dog take him to go now. Left hook was blocked. Good job by Zandrate getting the right hand up. You can see that Zandrate's legs are a little bit wobbly now as they come down the stretch in round 11. But they got one more three-minute period to go. You have to breathe. Souffle bien, c'est toi. You have to breathe, David. You have to go on the middle of the ring. Souffle bien. You don't have to go behind. It's the last round. Stop punching. It's the last round. You got that? You got the punch, three, four punch combination. Get close to this guy. Right? He jabs, you get under it, and start bringing your punches off. Right? Now look, you won that round. You understand me? You know why you won the round? Because you two fucking punches. Two kids reaching down deep to keep themselves going at this pace, this furious pace. Come on, you got the punch, you got a punch. Into the 12th round. round. You have to push him and you have to win. You have to win.
David Izanrique told us that he got into prize fighting when he had to fight his way through six kids and he stopped them all when he was a teenager. I believe him. I believe him now. <laughs> Zanrate trying to mount a big rally to start the 12th. Throwing many more punches than Tua at this early stage of the round. This will be a fascinating fight to score if it goes to the scorecard. And so how does Harold Letterman have it in the 12th? Harold? Jim, eight rounds to three, 107, 102, David Tua. I'd go with the big puncher in this fight, Jim. I just think Zanrate should have taken this fight more into the middle of that ring. Got his back a little bit off those ropes and got a little bit more power in the shots. David Tua's, like you said, hit him very, very much harder than he's on to take this. I have the fight six rounds to four, one even. And incidentally, keep in mind, as we showed you two weeks ago in Reno between James Tony and Montel Griffin, Harold Letterman favors the aggressor. If there are judges here who lean more toward ring generalship, they might be seeing a better performance by Zorite. A big left hook by Tua. Extra credit to Zorite for standing up in 12 rounds of David Tua's power shots. Extra credit to David Tua for standing up for 12 rounds with, oh, that was Zorite. Zorite's hands dropped for a moment. He gets the hands back up. Tua tries to finish. Zanrate won't go down, now he does. Referee Richard Flaherty with the count. Ropes are holding Zanrate up, that's why this is called a knockdown. He and stopped, it's over. Wisely stopped the fight. A sensational fight. A revealing win for David Tua. <laughs> what determination. He was not gonna leave without a knockout. He couldn't leave without a knockout. That fight would have been too close to score had he not left without a knockout. Without a knockout. David Tua says, I love you, Mom. Merry Christmas. He's headed home tomorrow. And he'll be in New Zealand with his family by Christmas Eve. And let's take a look at the finishing sequence. Roy Jones, this is splendid power punching. Very splendid. At this point, Izzara Taylor had just flat gotten weak, and you're not going to take these big punches from a puncher like David Tua all night long. And when you find a heavyweight that can punch like this in round 12, you got yourself a prospect for a heavyweight champion. Harold Letterman suggesting that Izan Ratai maybe took just a little bit too much. Richard Flaherty stopped the fight after this sequence and didn't wait for the completion of the count to do it as he could see that Izan Ratai didn't need any more. And fascinatingly enough, going into the 12th round, this fight belonged to Tua on a split decision only. Going into the 10th, Tua led 106-103 on one of the cards, 105-104 on another of the cards, and a third judge had his Zonrite ahead, 105-104. Let's go to ring announcer Mark Vero with the official... Ladies and gentlemen, the time, one minute, 54 seconds of the 12th round, the winner by technical knockout and still WBC International Heavyweight Champion, the Terminator, David Tua! Tua! So David Tua extends his record now to 26 and 0 with 22 knockouts in a fight that he still conceivably could have lost or at very or at the very uh, least could have gotten a draw in had he lost that 12th round the way it was being scored let's go to Larry Merton the ring David congratulations was that a little tougher than you expected well, uh, first of all uh First of all, I thank God uh, for the great victory tonight. And uh, you know, what can I say? I, I couldn't thank the, the sparring buttons enough. You know, uh, 
Isaac Brown, uh, Bigfoot Johnson. Yeah, but but, I think everybody, the, fight? but the, the fight was great. You know, I just thank the trainers for getting me in great shape that this fight came out victorious. Great fight. Great fight. Great fight. Great fight. Great fight. What do you, about Carson Withers? you had to be you must have had to be in supreme condition to go through a rugged fight like that well um <laughs> what can i say you know there are a lot of people out there to doubt my condition but uh, i'm not proven tonight did you feel you had to knock him out in the 12th round well i, I did i did what i had to do they, they told me in the corner they said you're, you know you gotta go out there and knock this guy out and i just went out there and just trade punches and thank God everyone. All right, Lou Duber, briefly, you wanted a hard, grueling fight. You wanted to see David have a tough opponent and break him down, but I don't know if you wanted one that tough. No, I didn't want one that tough, Larry, but uh, I'll tell you something. It's proof. You talked about his condition. This guy trains hard, hard, hard. Believe me. What does this fight show you about him as a prospective champion? Well, I think right now when we take him back to the drawing board, I think that he's capable of fighting any any heavyweight out there. What do you want to do next with him? Fight on uh, HBO and fight anybody they put in front of me. In the past, you've moved your fighters more quickly than you've moved Tua. You've gotten them into the championship rankings after 15 or 20 fights. Why are you waiting so long with him? Well, I wanted to make sure he was ready before I put him in the spot. I, I, I promised him, I promised father and mother in, 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 uh, in New Zealand that I wouldn't put him into a championship fight until he was ready. Let me tell you something, Larry. He's ready right now. Thank you very much, Lou. Back to you, Jim. All right, well, let's talk about that. Punch that numbers first, and you'll see why the fight was close on the scorecards, as Izorite had thrown 150 more punches by punch that numbers and landed almost the same number as Tua. But ultimately, 